So that we can have an inclusive celebration, we invite you to join us on Instagram or Twitter using hashtag Muhlenberg Honors. President Herring, Provost Anderson, faculty, staff, students, and honored guests. We will now begin our celebration of honors convocation of the 171st year of Muhlenberg College. We feel privileged to be welcomed into your homes. Today, some of us will be joining in this celebration from our beautiful Egner Chapel, and others will join from our own homes as we shine a light on esteemed members of our community during these dark times. Hello, my name is Reverend Kristen Glass Perez and I serve as the Muhlenberg College Chaplain. Today I'm in the Gideon F. Egner Memorial Chapel at Muhlenberg College and am delighted to be with you for the 2020 Honors Convocation. The chapel was made possible through the estate of Annie J. Egner Hartzell, who dedicated it as a memorial to her parents, Gideon F. Egner and Sarah A. Scheimer Egner. The cornerstone for the chapel was laid on October 12, 1929, just 12 days before the great stock market crash of that same year. I'm not sure they knew what lie ahead as they laid that stone. Annie's important gift began the construction of the chapel, and the remaining expenses were provided by contributions made from students, alumni, and friends of the college. Some of their names have been engraved into the stone walls, carved into the wooden pews, and etched on plaques throughout the chapel. There's even a name embroidered on the red altar cloth that you see behind me. The names are a powerful reminder of our enduring community. As we gather for Honors Convocation in 2020 to celebrate accomplishments of students, faculty, and staff, we are surrounded by names. Names of those in the past and names of those we will see and hear today on a computer, on a phone, or a TV. Much like the campus community in 1929, the campus community of 2020 did not imagine what these spring months would look like as the academic year started. And yet, we rejoice today in being together as the Muhlenberg College family, regardless of where we are physically. And so whether you are by yourself in a Gothic Revival Chapel, in your living room, kitchen, bedroom, outside or in the car, alone or with others, we are together for this celebration of Muhlenberg College. Let us begin with an invocation or invitation for our gathering. Blessed be the desire for learning that brought you here and quickens your soul with wonder. May you have the courage to listen to the voice of questioning and the wisdom to enter generously into your own uncertainty in discovering a new direction you long to take. May we each live this day compassionate of heart, clear in word, gracious in awareness, courageous in thought, and generous in love. Amen. It is now my great pleasure to introduce President Kathleen Herring. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the Honors Convocation of Muhlenberg College where we celebrate the achievements of our students, faculty, and staff. This ceremony focuses on our core mission, academic excellence, and the pursuit of learning. The seasons of the academic year are marked 
by opening convocation, honors convocation, and commencement. These ceremonies bring us together. They serve as powerful symbols of the connections that we have with one another. They celebrate the way we all strengthen the Muhlenberg community. This year we gather in a different way than previous celebrations. Since 1948, Honors Convocation has been held in Egner Chapel. I live here on campus, so I'm able to address you today from this beautiful space. This chapel is regarded by architectural historians as one of the finest examples of the collegiate Gothic style in America. It has been a place where Muhlenberg comes together in community to contemplate, to inspire, to celebrate. Although we are physically apart, we are together in spirit to honor individuals who have achieved excellence. We are reminded of the value of place, the classroom, the dining commons, this chapel, to reinforce our shared memories, shared values, and shared commitments. Today, I congratulate you. Your dedication to excellence, your commitment to hard work, and your passion for learning inspire us. Your families, your classmates, your colleagues, and I are deeply proud of you. Good afternoon. My name is Bruce Anderson, and I am the interim provost. Congratulations to all of the award winners today. The tradition at Honors Convocation is that a senior, well-respected colleague gets to give the faculty address, and this year is no different. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Lanithia Matthews Schultz, who is a professor of political science and chair of the political science department. Lanithia, take it away. I am honored to represent the faculty in offering our congratulations on your academic and community achievements. I know this is not the kind of ceremony you imagined. This is not the kind of talk I anticipated giving. We're continuing to find ways to celebrate the end of an academic year. For many of you, your final semester at Muhlenberg, but there is no ignoring the grim reality of the COVID-19 global pandemic. We've experienced an incredible rupture in our lives a global crisis defined not only by a staggering loss of life, but also by vast inequalities in space, isolation, safety, work, and economic security. Inequalities that themselves are consequences of political choices and larger systemic imbalances threatening liberal democracies. I've talked with many students over the past few weeks in an effort to find some purpose in my own work and to make meaning out of our collective experiences. And they have shared really incredible insight with me. Monique Beaupre, class of 2020, drew my attention to the opening paragraphs of Exit West. Exit West by Mohsen Hamid is an incredible story about love in a world defined by global migration, insecurity, and catastrophe. Widely read across campus this year, we were eagerly anticipating Hamid's visit in April. Now, like so many other things, rescheduled for an unknown point in the future. On the very first page of Exit West, we meet two young students, Saeed and Nadia, who themselves meet in a classroom. Hamid writes, it might seem odd that in cities teetering at the edge of the abyss, young people still go to class. In this case, an evening class on corporate identity and product branding but that is the way of things, with cities as with life. For one moment, we are pottering about our errands as usual, and the next we are dying. And our eternally impending ending does not put a stop to our transient beginnings and middles until the instant when it does. At first, it seems absurd. Saeed and Nadia are taking a class on product branding at the very moment their home communities are under siege as their city is teetering at the edge of the abyss. Monique and I considered how reading about Saeed and Nadia allowed us to find something familiar in our own lives during a period of deep uncertainty. That Saeed and Nadia meet in a classroom is so familiar to us. The more I reread this passage of Exit West, the more it made perfect sense that young people would be in school, 
especially during times of crisis, and even learning about things that seemingly are completely unrelated to the current moment. Our own moment of crisis, much like Saeed and Nadia's, has recrystallized the necessity of education for imagining different futures. With 90% of the world's school children currently out of school, we are reminded that education is a human right, that it is inextricably connected to our ability to exercise other rights, to make choices about our lives, and to participate meaningfully in democratic decision-making and self-governance. In the context of higher education, among the many lessons learned from COVID-19 are the limitations of measuring the value of education with narrow return on investment metrics. Our time at Muhlenberg has been much more about the worldly development of mind and character than it has been about preparing for careers or heightening competitive advantage. The shared goals of our classrooms have been about fostering connections to our world and to each other, building social and political trust, thinking creatively, adapting to uncertainty, developing our capacity to make moral and ethical choices, and learning how to practice freedom as public-spirited citizens. Higher education has radical emancipatory potential, but that potential can only be realized if and when we put into practice our responsibility to make a more just world. If it was not obvious before, the coronavirus pandemic makes abundantly clear the costs of the status quo. Muhlenberg has positioned us individually and collectively to imagine new futures, and it has given us the capacity to act on our imagination. Graduating senior Maddie Vaver commented to me the other day that our timelines have abruptly changed course. Still, she has found it helpful to think about the future, as disorienting as it seems at the moment, using the metaphor of a timeline. Following Maddie's suggestion, as we continue to imagine new timelines and futures, I hope you will keep a couple of things in mind. First, this experience will shape us, but Muhlenberg is with you. You are rooted here. And second, remember that our time in the classroom has all along been about becoming the people that we want to be and learning how to build the world that we want to live in. My deepest congratulations and best wishes. Stay safe and stay healthy. And now for the faculty awards. The class of 1932 research professor goes to Grant Scott. The Donald B. Hoffman Research Fellowship is awarded to Eduardo Olid Guerrero. The Crosette Family Faculty Fellowship for International Research is awarded to Leticia Robles Moreno. The Robert C. Williams Faculty Award goes to Maura Finkelstein. The Daniel and Carol Shiner Wilson Grant for the Completion of Scholarly Projects goes to Benjamin Carter, Francesca Coppa, Jordana Sprayberry. and Erica Sutherland. The Ruth and Joel Spira Prize for Distinguished Teaching is awarded to Lindsay Nagy. The award for the Outstanding Advisor to First Year Students goes to Casey Miller. The Faculty Rising Scholars Award for 2020 goes to Yariv Fadlan, Alexandra Fraser, Cassandra Hartford, Frederick Wright Jones, Jonathan Lassiter, Matthew Moore, James Russell, Jorge Silveri and Randall Smith. The Chairman's Award is awarded to Donna Kish Goodling. The second prize winner for the Hamry Prize goes to Robin Riley Casey. The first place recipients of the 2020 Hamry Prize are 
Jason Firetag, Andrea Gillespie, Elizabeth Machino, and Tom Roth. We will now move to a presentation of prizes and awards. Today is a celebration. In a moment, we will recognize the achievements of our students. Before we do so, I would like to recognize all of those who have made this day possible. I would like to thank all of the parents and other family members of the recipients for their support. The Student Government Award is given to a faculty or staff member for outstanding service to students by promoting student involvement, responsibility, and action. This year's award goes to Pamela Moschini, Director of the Office of Disability Services, the American Chemical Society Prize, Lehigh Valley section goes to Julia Nikolai. The Leslie R. Anders Memorial Prize goes to Elijah R. Summer. The Baldridge Prize goes to Emily L. Ham. The Charles S. Bednar Award in Political Science goes to Quentin D. Bernard. The Harry A. Benfer Memorial Scholarship goes to Sophia M. Echeverria. The Dr. Robert A. Boyer Prize goes to Ruby Ortiz. The Reverend Dr. H. H. Bruning Gift Fund Prizes goes to Sabrina N. Barhum. The Lucille Kafuros Award in Anthropology goes to Kaylee M. Jamison. The Lucille Kafuros Award in Sociology goes to Michelle Sanchez. The Elizabeth A. Carlson Memorial Prize goes to Olivia Garcia and Cheyenne Lyde. The Citizens Exchange Council Award in Russian Studies goes to Katrina D. Borman. The Class of 1969 Graduate Study Award goes to Rachel L. Cower. The Class of 1969 Music Award goes to Hannah E. Betts. The Corona di Aloro Prize in Italian Studies goes to Jacob T. Botello and Brooke C. Cohen. The Tara DiMarzo Dedication Award goes to Madison F. Kirchhofer. The Jeanette Eichenwald Interfaith Award goes to Nicholas B. Blue. The Russell B. Everett Romance Language Award goes to Liliana Stang. The Lillian and Anthony Fiddler Memorial Award in Music goes to Max Kassler. The William A. Flamish Award in Neuroscience goes to Lane C. Flores. The William M. French Award in Education goes to Anne M. Cannon. The Dr. George A. Fraunfelker Award goes to Nerfus Nieves and Daniel Sadler. The Russell Fulford Award goes to Liana P. Saab. The Footer Prize for Achievements in and Contributions to German Studies goes to Corinne R. Battistelli. The Carl E. Grothenhem Jr. Memorial Award for Excellence in Psychology goes to Tovia L. Marenstein. The Espy Ginto Young Writers Award goes to Amanda L. Clark. The Dr. John A. W. Haas Award goes to Stephanie Hike. 
The Susan E. Halame Journalism Award goes to Brooke W. Weber. The George H. Hambrecht Law School Award goes to Riley Minkoff. The Frederick E. Hansen Scholarship Award goes to Matthew P. Morella. The James W. and Barbara H. Herrick Award goes to Olivia Garcia. The Morris S. Potts Award goes to Jessica R. Ben Simon. The Wayne Kenneth Hollenbaugh and Linda J. King Hollenbaugh Award goes to Tatiana G. Lavera. The Hebner Global Education and Awareness Award goes to Kaya Greenspan Lehman. The Carol E. Hutchinson Memorial Prize for Research in Psychology goes to Darcy E. Furlong and Samantha B. Shara. The Hyman Goodman Award goes to Noy Messenger. The Lewis J. Jacobs Pre-Medical Prize goes to Natalie J. Trachtman. The Dr. Victor L. Johnson Scholarship goes to Ezekiel Tyman. The Keith M. Keenley Microbiology Award goes to Jacob S. Fishman. The Miriam E. Kaler Award for Excellence in Mathematics goes to Charis Hall. The Carol Embert Kunzelman Memorial Award goes to Rachel J. Richards. The Ralph A. and Mary A. Leckenwalner Memorial Prize goes to Natalie J. Trachtman. The Alphonse C. Lova Memorial Award in Chemistry goes to Miranda K. Robinson. The Cena Marcus Art Scholarship goes to Francesca M. Pino and Jessica M. Ruggieri. The Dr. J. Marino Jr. Award in Computing Science goes to Andrew C. Verena. The Wesley S. Mittman Mathematical Prize goes to Heather C. Downey. The Noel R. and Edith J. Moyer Award in Philosophy goes to Christy Garcia and Patrick Kantner. The Clifford R. Moyer Memorial Prize in Physics goes to G. H. Koo. The Muhlenberg Goodwill Prize goes to Mitchell Knafo. The Robert W. and Edith M. Mull Award for Excellence in Mathematics goes to Brittany E. Gelb. The Novartis Endowed Scholars Program Award goes to Allison R. Bashford, Julia E. Nikolai, and Marta Reardon. The Dr. Robert S. Ochner Award goes to Cynthia Norenberg. The Arthur C. Peters Memorial Prize goes to Michael R. Gazatska. The Phi Sigma Iota Award in French goes to Jonah M. Lieberman. The Phi Sigma Iota Award in Spanish goes to Naomi Roll. The President's Award for Outstanding Academic Achievement and Promise for Postgraduate Work by a Junior goes to Gianna Perry and Rebecca Shear. The Dr. John J. Reed Scholarship goes to Liam Tocheni. The D. Irvin and Marjorie M. Reedsman Scholarship goes to Gabriella D. Solomon. The Todd L. Romig Memorial Prize goes to Samuel J. Morgan. The Martin A. Rossoff Clue Memorial Award goes to Jeremy Silverstein. The Dr. Dominic J. Salinas Memorial Award goes to Olivia M. Toner. The Senior Female Scholar Athlete of the Year Award goes to Rashida Hay. The Senior Male Athlete of the Year Award goes to Maxwell E. Kieran. The Dr. John B. Shankweiler Prize goes to 
Emma Chiron. The Paul C. Scheer Essay Prize goes to Kiva B. Mark. The Dr. John and Ethel Shinte Scholarship Award goes to Leora L. Finkel. The Dr. Robert E. Shoemaker Graduate Fellowship goes to Bennett E. Urian. The Stanley D. Sloyer Award in Music goes to Margaret M. Capone. The Sojourner Truth Award goes to M. Panetta. The Dr. Harold L. Stanger Jr. Fellowship for Graduate Study in Literature goes to Tyra B. Griffin. The Harry C. and Mary M. Trexler Trust Pre-Theological Prize goes to Carol Ann Miller. The Dr. William Wackernagel Award for Excellence in German goes to Jacob K. Metcalf. The Paul M. White Business Award goes to Christopher J. Brzezinski. The Paul M. White Business Award goes to Stephanie Hike. The Paul M. White Business Award goes to Adam Kronick. The Paul M. White Business Award goes to Tram and Fam. The Women's Auxiliary of Muhlenberg College Scholarship in honor of the Reverend George F. Eichenhorn Jr. goes to Ann M. Cannon. The Women's Auxiliary of Muhlenberg College Music Scholarship for a Junior goes to Hannah Pulaski. The Women's Auxiliary of Muhlenberg College Pre-Theological Scholarship goes to Kennedy F. Maxwell. The Ann E. Wansowitz Scholars in Education Award goes to Ann M. Cannon. The Ann E. Wasnowick Scholars in Education Award goes to Jonah M. Lieberman. The Ann E. Wasnowick Scholars in Education Award goes to Gabrielle S. Walsh Shore. The Reverend Dr. Arvids Zidonis Jr. Fellowship for Graduate Studies goes to Jonah M. Lieberman. Our next award is given to a student organization which has contributed in the most positive way to Muhlenberg College. The winner of the President's Award is Top Notch. The award is being presented to Nisha Godwell. We also have several national awards finalists and semifinalists. The J. William Fulbright Program Award goes to Ryan M. Dimmick. The J. William Fulbright Program Award goes to Olivia M. Toner. The Student Government Achievement Award goes to Nicholas G. Rubin. The Community Engagement Award goes to Dermer Kersal Carbaugh. The Dean of Students Award, Zeta Beta Tau. The student representative is Jared Ellis. The Greek Leader of the Year Award goes to Jonathan Diaz. The Priscilla E. Howard Tudor Award goes to Melissa Graylitzer. The Resident Advisor of the Year Award goes to Marie Grace Imanyaro. The Student Activity Award goes to Desiree Basales. The Student Leader of the Year Award goes to Mitchell Canefo. The Kurt M. Thede Prize goes to Derma Kurzel Carval. And this concludes the 2020 Honors Convocation Award Ceremony. As we come to the end of this extraordinary ceremony, I want to say how proud I am of the achievements of each person honored here. As you are watching this event, together with your family or alone, you should be aware that everyone in the Muhlenberg community shares that sense of pride in your achievements. Today's Honors Convocation celebrates the excellence of a Muhlenberg liberal arts education. In these challenging times, the value of that education is clear. We are confronted with contradictory information, with divisiveness, with inequities, and restrictions on being together. 
Your liberal arts education provides direction to help you navigate these times. You have the perspective to evaluate information instead of passively accepting it as truth. You understand that crisis can exacerbate inequities and exclusion. You nurture relationships in ways that lift up authentic human experience. You use creativity and openness to thrive in the face of ambiguity and uncertainty. To you who are honored here, you demonstrate the power of the liberal arts. You are role models for learning, leadership, and service. Congratulations to all of you. And thank you to the families, friends, and colleagues who support you. And now, please join us in the singing of Muhlenberg's alma mater. I love to sit and think and dream and oft conspire and yet amid the swelling stream of fond desire my heart still ever turns to The name engraved on this lectern in front of me says John A. W. Haas, fourth president of Muhlenberg College. Here is what President Haas said at the dedication of Egner Chapel in 1929. May many desire to have a memorial which shall bless the generations to come and send out untold streams of benediction in the days of the future. And so to the Muhlenberg College community in 2020, I offer this benediction or blessing. In the leaving, in the letting go, let there be this to hold on to at the last, the enduring of love, the persisting of hope, the remembering of joy, the offering of gratitude, the receiving of grace, and the blessing of peace. Amen.